Hey guys, this is a little walk around of the new Toyota GT86. Towards the front, you get some buzz and headlamps with LED daytime running lights. Um, the LEDs are in there and the halogen headlights over there, which is pretty cool. Um, you get these fog lamps over here. And if you pay attention, this car is actually made with Subaru. And actually, you see here it says Subaru, which is actually really funny. But anyway, um, yeah, so you got your indicators over here, your fog lamps. And I did another video on a different type of EGT86, and it has a different type of front end, as you can see. You got, uh, I believe, another set of indicators here, which is really interesting. So, don't know why, but yeah. This is a box engine, because developed with Subaru so the pistons go horizontally so bell center of lower gravity and bare handling which is really interesting this guy has a fuel consumption of 7.1 liters per hundred kilometers so pretty decent I mean it's not bad um, for what it is as you can see here these are the tires that it comes with you get some Michelin's Michelin which types are there? Michelin Premacy Says here, same tires again on the Prius, so it means great for drifting, not much grip. So you get this blacked out kind of finish, you get some of this chrome, I mean, brushed aluminum finish as well, which is really good. Got some tire shine kind of sticking to my finger, but ugh, not sticking to my pants. Oh well, um, yeah, so got your indicators there and your wheels, looks pretty good. I think they are look about 19 inch, not too big, not too small. Your touch and unlock system, you know, when you have without the key, you can open the door without the key. Um, your lip spoiler, so little spoiler over there, it's optional extra, I believe. And yeah, it kind of just gives a little bit spoily look. Here are your tail lights, they are LED it's over here, they're all LEDs, and you got your indicators and your third braking light over here. This panel feels very, look, at, look how much it flexes. Crazy. Anyway, you got some your third brake light and your two reverse lights, which is pretty cool. And your dual exhaust over here, which you can actually fit my entire wrist in there, which is really impressive. So, yeah, got a reversing camera over there, as you can see. And there's no button to actually open the door. Oh, yeah, this is the boot, but there isn't. So, another brake light there. So, how many brake lights does this car need? Um, yeah, which is really interesting. Let's do a little little shot of the back so you can see you got your fin up there for your radio and stuff can't open that but if I'm correct you can open it from the inside nothing you can see the frameless windows when I close it slides up so it's pretty neat I should say it's made in Japan but Fuji heavy industries sounds like it's made in Japan even the writing here it's written in Japanese as well somewhere no, it's not. It's all Chinese. Okay. But I know it's built in Japan, this car. So, to open the fuel cap, you pull this little latch over there. And it should open. So you flip top of there. Little information. Runs on 98 fuel only. Wow. So you can't even put 95. That's interesting. Remove slowly. Fuel spray may cause injury. Okay, that's very scary when I'm filling the car. So it's... Only 98 you can put here, you can't even put 90, 95. Oh well, good fuel for the car. Um, yeah, so as you can see here, you got your kick plates over here, which looks pretty cool. Your sports pedals over there, which is really neat. And a little look at the little shot of the interior. I might just jump in. This car's very low, so you're gonna have to like duck as you get in. And a little look of those. This is really low. Can you actually adjust it? I don't think these seats are electric, but um, will you pull this up in? Okay, here we go. There we go. Now we're getting somewhere. A little bit too low for my liking. I mean, not used to being this low in the seat, but anyway. And I don't know how to adjust the seat lower. It's really more lower. There we go. Okay, that's a bit better. So here are your gauges. So you got your speed over there you got your rev counter which is pretty cool and you got a digital readout there so it obviously shows a digital view of the speed over there so you don't have to look there but it looks pretty cool your odometer 
your trip all displayed there, your fuel gauge, and your temperature for your engine, which is pretty cool. Um, as you can see, you got your wiper controls. You've got your your indicators. You got some pedal shifters, which is pretty neat. And that's for the automatic transmission, mind you. The steering wheel is all leather wrapped, and it looks perf red, but it ain't. And it's got some red stitching here, as you can see. You've got some red stitching all the way around here. So the perf red ends here, and it continues around there, which is pretty cool. Hard plastics here, kind of like a grey finish. You got a couple of buttons there. I don't know what this does, but I think that just displays the trip. So it's only done 16 kilometers, so it's a new car. And if I click display, maybe it shows some other stuff. No, it doesn't. So that's all you got access to. If I click display again, and I press that, you can see all the gauges. They actually, all the lights, the gauges, they lit up so you can actually see how much. So it's got a little less than half a tank. And yeah, it's pretty cool. So if I wait a little bit longer, you can see the gauges turn off. But yeah, see, turned off. Pretty cool. Um, over here, you got your dimming control so you can actually light up the the windows if you want, which is pretty cool. I mean, windows, what am I saying? I mean, light, they change the lighting for the headlights. No, the instrument cluster, what am I saying? Tongue, mine's not in sync today. You can change the lighting, so if I pull this up, I think it just lights up more. Pull it down, it'll light up more, or up, or you get the idea. So, yeah, which is pretty cool. You got your, some hard plastics here. You got this panel kind of pops out a bit, your bass speaker, which is surrounded with this gray kind of finish. Which makes it a bit more appealing. Um, it's all rubber here. Some red stitching here. Also, you get some uh, piece that goes all the way around here. Some more of that red stitching. Hard plastics. The handles all fake, all plastic, and with some chrome. You know, imitation of chrome. Hard handles, all plastic and stuff. And some hard perforated looking, um, perforated looking hard panels in there. You got a little dispenser there to put your drink. Only one drink you can put there. And I can see here you got another like more it's like a separation in the panels for this kind of like design kind of element thing. But yeah, which is pretty cool. Cruise control, forgot to mention about that. I actually thought that was the cruise control, but I only realized they only put the they always put the cruise control settings on the steering wheel. A little stupid thing I was thinking. Uh, it's got so your hazards and it just lights up. Um if we'll open this your glove box. Over here, you've got some storage there. It's not too much, I mean, it's what it is, what it is, but it looks good, alright. Got some interesting um, carbon fiber looking dash over here, this piece of carbon fiber. I mean, what is it? I know it feels kind of stitched on, but it's pretty cool. Um, the dash here, it's all soft touch. You can see the rubber, it's quite soft and stuff like that. Your audio controls here. If I pull this, you got your speed over here, your map. Well, yeah, these are actual buttons, oh, the little soft kind of, kind of not touch buttons. Like they've got that little layer that makes sense. So it's your map, voice command, audio. You can't turn on the radio, which is rather unfortunate. So I can't show you the infotainment. You can check the CD there, and this one I believe is for your navigation, if I'm correct. I just want to see what it says to the AVN. Made in Japan. Okay, that's a good thing. That's a good sign. Yeah, it's probably navigation. So uh, always put these the wrong way. I just don't, don't want to break anything. There you go. Well, here's your your air conditioning controls and stuff like that. Uh, here it actually displays your time. It's pretty cool. Uh, these are lights up, so it just tells you whether the passenger has put your seatbelt on. Um, you got your temperature control, and I really like the design of these because it kind of looks like a, a bolt. Like bolts, like it looks very mechanical, parts of the engine. So, got some nice feedback here. So, you got um, your temperature control, your fan speed, and your temperature for the driver. You can press that for the rear demister. You got this to divert the air, and auto where they both work at the same time and show the same air. And same thing when you press the door, same thing. So, you got your, your controls here. You got your rear, another one. Didn't I already said your rear? Maybe it's a different type of demister. See, your rear demister, AC, recycling. Dual, like I mentioned earlier, and just the button to turn off. Here's your gear knob, as you can see, it's all leather, red stitching, some of that, some plastic there, like a design kind of thing. Uh, you got over here your your driver select to put in the drive and all that. 
Um, you got some certain modes here, which is pretty cool. You got to turn off the track control, so you can go drifting and stuff. This is this is what people do in these kind of cars. Um, sport mode and snow mode. I don't know if you can actually will it you will ever use this function, but um maybe in Japan it snows a lot, so you probably might use it there. I wish they put some other words, I mean like dirt or track or something like that, but snow's an interesting function, so maybe there's more modes, I don't know, maybe it's not the only mode. There's a special sport mode, which I don't know what that does, but maybe it sharpens the thorough response, the steering wheel and maybe the RPM and stuff like that. Not too sure. Got some more, more of that hard trim there. I think these switches are for your seats. I think they're heated seats. All individual, driver, passenger. Got some cup holders here. You can remove it get, to give you more storage. I think you can move it back to. No, you can't. You can't fit them away. You move that there, you can see you got another voltage up there. Very cool. I forgot to mention you got a stop start button and you got some little dispenser there. And I think I showed you earlier, this earlier, but your AUX and your USB. I mean AUX, yeah, AUX and USB. Um, you got a handbrake here. It's all carbon leather, and it's got some nice stitching there. And then the back, the boot, the leather boot here, shift boot. It's all, I think it's rubber, kind of. Or well, it could be leather, maybe it's leather. Coming through over there. Here are your seats, as you can see. You've got your seats over here, your headrest is all just made from this nice leather. It's got some red stitching over here, some more red stitching over here as well, it's really neat. It's all suede over here as well. And you've got this real cool cool design over here as well, they've seen that. You can get all kinds of colours, I mean you can get this orange accents here, red or, I don't know, like whatever colours, depending on the exterior of the car, you can actually change up the interior colours like that, which is really cool. No, of the leather, which is really cool. So nice suede. I really love these seats. They're very comfy. Hmm, it's very nice. Um, yeah. So as you can see, you got some of your your speaker. I mean, sorry, not your base speaker. There, you got a um, you've got a what do you call a drink dispenser, so you can put your drinks in there, and some of your door the door cards are kind of design over there. You got two speakers there. You got your bass, your tweeter, another bass and tweeter speaker there, and another tweeter lodged over there, as you can see. Um, you got some more stuff around here, so you got your lights, your river mirror, yo, not a bandy mirror. Uh, not myself today. Um, you got another one there. And this one's a switch just to turn on the lights. Not normally they put like a sunglass holder, but doesn't have it but it's not too bad. I was gonna sit in the back seat but I tried it out it's really cramped and they're pretty much useless I mean you could give it a try I mean if you really want I might mm, maybe just for the fun of it I might just give it a crack to see what it's actually like so yeah I'm just gonna move the seat back and just try it out I just want to know how much weight you can actually fit in there it's not electric but I believe they're optional extra um, can't pull that, nope, then you just pull that there, and then you pull this there, and then that should fall forward. And that's the interior, yeah. Never done this one here before, but it's always a first time. Sorry about the camera for a minute, just a seat. Oh, now I've sat here. Oh, there is space, but when I put the seat back, it's gonna block me right here, so. Well, that's the interior right here. It's hard to move out. I don't wanna pull the seat back, because if I do it then. Yeah, but I'm in a weird position, it's very laid back. My head touches the thing there, and um, yeah, it's pretty tight. I mean, hard plastics here. Got armrest here, but pretty tight but you really can't really do too much here but yeah so as so now we know the receipts aren't that practical let's grab my bag this is gonna be a bit ugly me getting out of the car
Yeah, so that wasn't really a pretty way of getting in and out of the car, so... I don't like that seat, so... Yeah, it's really... Um, you're, ne you're never going to carry people in there. So... I'm about to show you again. Um, I'm going to show the engine bay, actually, quickly. That's really cool. I think do that, you pull this toggle here. And then... Yeah. When I close the window, I mean the door, you can see it slides up. Pretty cool. So if I pull this up, it looks like a big engine bay. It must be yeah, this little thing there, you pull that to the side. And... Ah, it's actually really hard to open. I think you pull it left or right. Gotcha. Yeah, sorry about that. Also, I, I kept slipping the little thing. So this is the Toyota and Boxer, more Toyota box engine, but more like a Subaru box engine. So you can see, it's a Subaru D4S. So it's a, see the cylinders? They go sideways. So it's the alternator. It's naturally aspirated, so yeah, but this is more of a Subaru than a Toyota, but this is what it is. It's actually really small. Look how small the engine is compared to the rest of the car. I mean, that's the, this is the entire hood, and that's it. I mean, technically, this is the whole engine bay, and that's your whole transmission there, you can see. A lot of piping, it's pretty messy, and there's cables going everywhere. Battery, wait, wait. If that was the battery, then what was this? No clue. Water, washing fluids, coolant. I think that's for your Tokyo, Japan's Tokyo, Japan, or something like that. So I can't read it. So yeah, it's built in Japan, that's a good thing. Just trying to look at the engine bay. Pretty messy, but yeah. This is what it is. I think produce about 150 kilowatts of power. If I'm correct, I'm not too sure. That's cool. Yeah. It's all in Japanese there, the handwriting. Repair technician. Yeah, but messy engine bay, but pretty cool stuff. Sorry, it's just really hard holding the camera and actually adjusting it. Well, that was a solid thud. Well, that's my little walk around of the Toyota GT86, or known as 86 in Australia. So, um, thanks for watching and I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. And sorry about the mistakes and stuff, it just wasn't myself, but yeah, but thanks for watching. Appreciate it. See ya, bye.